Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. I am recording on the road and so not in my usual space, but that is kind of the nature of where we are in the transit. So I feel like it's such a beautiful reflection of what's happening right now. And we have this moon in Virgo, sun in Aries, moving towards a full moon this week. And we also have Mercury at the last degrees of Aries right now. So it's um, Monday. I normally make my videos on Sunday or Saturday. And, um, you know, with travel and everything and with uh, being sick, being unwell for quite a while, here I am. And, and the Virgo moon is such a beautiful reflection of that quality of healing, right? The Virgo Pisces access, I really do think of as the healer, the teacher, um, in a way that the divine nature of our life, the guidance that we receive, the, the way spirit moves us through life is very much Pisces and Virgo is the discernment, the um, attention to detail, the focus. And I have noticed so many incredible healers, um, you know, whether they're medical uh, doctors or acupuncturists or, you know, even accountants and, you know, the, the need for a refinement, the need for um, meticulousness and focus and all of that clarification, right? And what, what are we doing right now in this time of Aries? We've just come from an Aries new moon at the beginning or at that towards the end of last month. And we're moving towards an Aries new moon at the end of this month, which is also an eclipse. So we're we're in a double Aries intensification time. And the Virgo moon is bringing us towards the full moon in Libra. It's bringing us to refine and define and clarify and organize the details of our maybe messy, chaotic turbulent life experience that is in flux and changing, needing to heal and awaken and needing to become clearer about who we are and what we truly are. And a part of that healing process is figuring out what needs to be done, organizing our life, fixing the problems that we might find through our mind. I received this message from Spirit the other day, which really, um, you know, it, it, it surprised me. And I was like, I have to write this down because I'm not sure that I know how this works until I say it and work it over and over again. But it's very much reflected in this Virgo moon time. The message was the effects, effects, like the effects, like cause and effect, right? The effects of our lives are the evidence that the conditions are not right, right? So if we have something going on, if we're in ill health, that is an effect of our life. And it's a reflection that the conditions, right, in the body are not right. And it's simple, like a fever or a cough or a cold or not feeling well, being sick, having a long-term illness, whatever we're struggling with, a break in the bones or the body that is healing, the effects are the evidence that the conditions are not right. The conditions must be changed before the effects or the evidence can change, right? The conditions must be changed if the environment, if our living environment is toxic and we're ill in our home because let's say of mold or if our um, work environment right? If, it, if there's immense stress in our lives, if our family relational environment, if communication is challenged, if our emotional health or well-being, any one of the things in our, in our life experience that we can be struggling with, if the conditions must be changed before the effects or the evidence can change, right? Before the, before we've 
go back to having a full voice and feeling healthy and well before, you know, like uh, even postpartum, you know, care. When the baby is on the outside and the body needs time to heal, the conditions of the body must change before the evidence can change, before the evidence of that we're no longer with child, right? And that some of these things, lot more longer term, Saturn is in Pisces, right? Longer term illnesses, disabilities, effects of our life, longer term conditions of our mind, our spiritual health and well being right? Our physical environments, the things that we build with our time and our energy, Taurus, the money that we make and invest and what we save in order, in order to build and feel like we have reserves, right? Our skills in our work, the, the skill that we develop over time in doing something and devoting ourselves to something, our family issues, which take our, our relationship issues, even the loss of a relationship or the letting go in something takes time to feel and to heal. And in order for us to begin something new, right? Where the full moon is the culmination energy. We're moving towards full light of the moon and the sun. And in Virgo, we're being given the opportunity to see what's not right, you know, what effects and conditions are not right. We're we can then find ourselves in the choice to attend to the conditions, to make those conditions right, to figure out what the real problem is. And with many of these things relative to Pluto being in Aquarius, we're, we're getting a taste of a new frontier. We're getting a taste of new energy and new liveness, new thought patterns and waves of experience that, that can really open us up to so much possibility and potentiality. And guaranteed when Pluto goes back into Capricorn, there will be an opportunity to re, uh, restructure and revise and return, right? To the fundamental conditions of our life that have to be changed before the evidence of what we desire, what we want, what we feel, what we need, what is required of us in this evolutionary journey to become manifest in our lives, right? People talk so much about manifestation and I've learned the hard way that I can't just get the outside thing and make the conditions of my life change. I've had to learn like so much of my life. I was looking at people who were living a particular way and thinking, wow, if I had that thing that they have, then I would be able to be living a particular way. And then I'd go get that thing, right? Taurus, material object, that physical object and realize that I hadn't dealt with the thing inside me driving the thing. Well, that makes me wanna cry. You know, and that I have to go back and really work on the thing inside, right? Mars is in Cancer. Saturn is in Pisces, the South noted in Scorpio. This is all calling us back to working the thing inside before we can really have the thing. And Venus is in Taurus, right? We can desire to easily reach for the pleasure, the thing that feels good, the food that feels good, the stuff that feels good, you know, like the cozy sweater, the warm cup of tea, the, the house that looks beautiful and all, all the beautiful things outside are great, right? Even the beautiful flowers of spring that begin to emerge or even the, you know, the feeling in our body that starts to happen when we start to feel well. If you ever made the transition to a new eating plan or a new diet, you know, um, there's a point in the beginning where it's very challenging. It feels terrible and sometimes like if you've given up coffee or sugar it feels horrible and then there's a tipping point usually beyond the first couple of days three days I think in is about where you start to emerge with new energy you start to feel good there's a tipping point about three weeks into any change where 
you start to notice the physical effects of that change on your life, on your body. If you've been exercising, you start to feel stronger. And there is a, there's actually research done on this that at 40 days or beyond, that is when externally people start to notice the change in you and it starts to be grounded in a space of um, inner landscape right? The, the habit that we form from getting beyond that first 72 hours, whether you're quitting smoking or you're quitting sugar or you're starting some, starting a new job or starting something, whatever you're doing in your life, that's really developing something that is maybe feels far off. You know, if we're overweight or out of shape, or if we've been sick for a long time, or if we've been smoking for a long time, if we've been you know, had a baby inside of us for a long time, whatever. I'm using physical body um, examples because of Virgo is earth embodied Mercury and Taurus is earth embodied Venus, right? These are the archetypal energies, but this can apply to any area of our life. Instinctually where we are, Aries drawn to start something new to create and to make medicine right to to convert the challenges and the gifts and the wounds that we've been facing and the the stresses right it's um when you start to work out it stresses the muscles it tears the tissues apart and that tearing apart when our lives start to change when things start to break down and Mercury retrograde is coming, friends. You know, things can, this week, Mercury moves in. It's actually tonight, uh, later today, Mercury will enter zero degrees Taurus. So we're going from this very culminatory and Aries energy. And notice that that 29 degrees Aries is a super hot spot. It is where we will have this lunar uh, new moon eclipse on April 19th, April 20th, depending on your time zone. It is where, um, you know, so much of all this planetary energy is going to be passing through, right? It is where Venus passed through last month when she squared Pluto. I pay close attention in astrology to repetition of planets. And when repeating planetary energies cross through the same portal, Again and again, I see it as this opportunity that we get in various different ways and phases to refine and define it, to fix and work and face the same content, but through different lenses. And always when we're on an evolutionary journey, we're meeting ourselves from the present moment, from a new point where all that has come before is giving us where we are now and all that has not yet come is already latent and prepared and existing inside of us, whether we're aware of it or not. I think of it as like a constant process of remembering through the present moment. That is everything in life has already really happened. Our process of waking up and of learning and of growing is just a remembering in the moment who we truly are. And so as we work on remembering this week, there's gonna be so much remembering as Mercury moves towards that North Node in Taurus <clears throat> and squares Pluto, right? As it enters Taurus, the, pay attention to these conversations in the early parts of this week to what's working as the moon moves, <coughs> excuse me, towards her opposition M moon and libra especially these are critical conversations to our evolution that moon and libra is going to square mars and cancer it's going to move towards an opposition with this sun chiron right and then right after that move towards a full moon and i want to go a little bit slower just so you get like the importance of our relationships and conversations in these times, things that we're healing, working on, figuring out, 
adjusting um, conversations that we're having are fundamental to the evolutionary shifts that are gonna be happening, not just right now, later on in the year, again in May when Pluto goes retrograde, again in next year when Pluto enters, these are foundational and we're in the portal of eclipses, which means that they are um, North Node, life-changing, South Node, life-changing releases of energy, of shifts, of catalyzing things that will impact us for the next 19, 20 years, right? And sometimes we can't, you know, the hindsight 2020 thing is it's true. We can't, when we're in it, know that the things that we're saying, that the people that we're meeting, that the changes that are happening are building the next 20 years of our life. And we don't know whether that incidental meeting or that, you know, offhand comment or that word or that idea or that thought or that thing or that earth or that desire, right? Desire, bottom line, Pluto desire to change, to create something new in our lives, to create a vision for ourselves and our future. And the bottom line, the ways in which we've been forced so hard to purify our lives, our relationships, to let go sometimes when we don't even want to, you know, I feel, I feel the sadness there too. You know, sometimes we don't want to let go. And even so, sometimes life requires us to let go. And to be able to be with ourselves and trust the process with patience. 20 year patience, two year patience, 30 year patience, you know, nine month patience, maybe six month patience. Right now I have like lunar, lunar patience yeah, sometimes, cultivating the deeper trust and patience and faith in the timing of all things, in the ways that all things are given to us in the right time and come to us in the right time and leave us. Sometimes not in the time that we feel, not in the time that we desire, but even that that is building our character, our strength, our capacities to pray, to trust, to have faith in the process, to, to have faith in God's will, you know? Uh, and I trust that this full moon will be a potent one for all of us in our own ways, especially if you have Aries, Libra placements, Cancer, Capricorn placements, especially if you have strong Taurus, Aquarius, you know, things affect all people differently. And astrology is not one size fits all, not as is as like every single human being on this planet created unique and a, a unique and individual expression of the divine. No two people alike, even twin identical twins, not the same, different birth charts, even micro moments. Each of us, a unique expression of the divine and all, we are all reflected in this same chart. All of us, every single one of us, all of us, following our own life's journey and all of us together on the same planet. You know, not the same boats, not the same conditions, not the same environments, not given the same choices and chances. And, you know, we it's not fair to say that someone living in poverty and someone with extreme wealth have are, are in the same boat that is not true at all that someone with phys living in with a physical challenge or imp you know whatever their experience is not the same as someone who is physically fit and healthy and able but like all these things 
the complexities of our human experience all shared in the same divine evolutionary push and yet not all the same, not all souls are experiencing. That's why looking at the soul's perspective and our unique calling to what we're called to work on, what we're called to heal in our family systems, in our communities, in our lives. This is why I feel so much joy, passion, responsibility, and care of what people have to do with their own lives and their own you know, it's like not one size fits all, but we're all reflected in this chart. And so this full moon is, you know, really coming to illuminate the cardinal axis of life the, and the fixed axis of life where we all share in a very fundamental ground in many different and absolutely unique ways. And so as the moon moves through that fullness, look, there it is, um, 16 degrees, uh, Libra and Aries, sun in Aries, moon in Libra. There may be great challenges in that polarity, right? The polarity is often a place, the opposition is a polarity. The square is the challenge of the polarity, right? See Mars in that square. Um, and, and those are the places that catalyze our growth, that force us to and push us to face the days and weeks ahead are going to push us to face the very core dynamics. What's helpful in all of this, of course, is that we have Saturn and <clears throat> um, Mars in, in water signs, you know, uh, the south node in Scorpio. When the moon moves through that uh, full moon into Scorpio, you know, we, are, we, have, we have the help of the waters. We have the help of our emotional bodies. We have the help of the healing elements. Our healing work can be such a powerful support. This can be rest, you know, not pushing ourselves to do, but pushing ourselves to rest, to grounding in this grand water trine, grounding in the sextiles that are supporting us between this um, earth body of the feminine, <clears throat> the earth body of the feminine, the goddess in a, her nature is support of us laying to lay down our burdens, to lay down our concerns and to give them to her. The embodiment of mercury is helping us to really tune into our body before we speak words to feel our bodies and to slow down as we speak. And that's that can be really helpful, especially if there's charge, especially if there's challenge, especially if there's deep content coming up in our lives, if we're facing and changing things that are so core to who we are as, as people, as human beings. There's so much that we can grow in in this time. And knowing that as the moon moves through Scorpio, you know, and comes around, we can, we can give ourselves the support we need to let go and be refreshed by new ideas. And we enter in this week, I'm visiting family in the East Coast, um, entering into the holiday of Pesach, right? A holy, holy space of devotion, and freedom and coming together, uh, a, a celebration and a recognition of the challenges of the suffering of people and also of, of the blessings of God, of, of what we're being handed in this time. Like to have our hearts and our minds so close to that uh, interwoven nature of the suffering, the slavery, the oppression, the challenges, and the celebration 
the coming together, the remembrance, the work that we're doing, the the holiness of our lives, right? We use these holy holidays and these times of challenge to remember where we've come from, how far we've come from, and where we're going, where where our freedom lies. And what is known to us, what is known to us, what we can be with right here and right now, and what is unknown and in God's hands, that we have to, we have to um, learn how to be with all of it. That's our, that's our human experience. So I send you my love and blessings in this time. If you like this video, if something touched you, please leave it in the comments. Um, subscribe to my channel. And on my website, astrologywithmichelle.com, you can access free classes, free teachings, subscribe to my mailing list, and join me. Um, every month I do a month ahead. It's $11 to join the monthly subscription. For that, I do a new moon ceremony, which will come around at the new moon. And I'll be teaching a live free eclipse class for the EA Zoom community as well. So if you want to join me for that next week on April 13th, there will be details on my website. If you're a member of my website or subscribe to my email list, you'll be notified when I post that. I love and appreciate every single one of you who watch my channel and you mean so much to me. So um Blessings on your week ahead. Uh, yeah, be with be with your life and these times with a tender heart, a, a close eye, and an open mind, and all will be well. Take care. Bye for now, friends.